Hello everybody, this is Cardinal the Cat, and welcome to your 28th Lua tutorial. In this video, we'll be going over calling C functions from Lua, so let's get started. So first, we can get rid of all the code from the last tutorial. So, everything except the do file and opening, the, opening and closing the Lua state. And then we're going to create a C function, so we'll just say int add, and you may expect to have the int n1 and int n2 parameters, but we're actually going to give it a Lua state, so Lua underscore state. And this is the same as this, obviously, and we'll call it star l, and that's the only parameter we give it. So we declare it here, and define it here, so we say int add Lua state star l, and then the function is going to create a double called n1 and set it to lua underscore to number and this probably seems strange since we haven't pushed anything onto the stack yet and you give it one not negative one pay attention uh, one so then we do the same with n2 lua to number l and 2 so the reason we're doing this, rather than taking n1 and n2 as parameters, is because the function, this add function isn't called by Lua with the parameters that we define here. You can give the function any parameters and they'll be pushed onto the, this function's local stack. In Lua, all functions have a local stack. And the same goes for C functions called from Lua. So the parameters that we give it in Lua will be called by the local stack and pushed on as 1 and 2. So then we get our n1 and n2 that we'll be adding together, since this is an add function. So we get those and set those to n1 and n2. We get the two parameters that we'll be defining in Lua. The next thing we have to do is we have to create the return value. So you may expect that we'd use return, but we are not. We have to push the return value onto the stack. It's Lua push number, not just push number. So we will push n1 plus n2. And then we use the normal C way of returning things, and we say 1. And I'm not sure if this is required, but it's convention that you return the number of values that the function will be returning by pushing them onto the stack, by pushing the values onto the stack. So if we were to push another value onto the stack as a return value, we'd return 2 here but we're only pushing one so we keep it as one. And again, I'm not sure if it's required, but it's convention, so I highly recommend doing it. And now we are going to call this function in Lua. So we'll say x equals add n1 n2. Or no, we're not going to put n1 and n2. Let's put 2 and 7. So you can see that, again, that uh, the parameters we give add here are different than the parameters that add takes in C. And that's because of the way that Lua works with C. Uh, the C function takes its parameters that are given in Lua from the stack rather than the actual parameters that a normal C function would take. And that's because Lua has no way to access the parameters. It can't access C that way. It only has a very limited access to the code in C. So the next step is to get our add function to be recognized by Lua because right now our test.lua file has no idea that this add function exists so right now this function is nil so it will create an error. So we have, what we have to do is we have to get the function onto the stack and then register it with Lua. So first we'll say Lua underscore push C function and we give it L and then we give it add without parentheses. Remember, it's like push. It's like passing a function as a parameter in Lua. You don't give it the parentheses. And this is, if you don't know, this is possible to do in C. It's very hard and very advanced. And by that, I mean I don't know how to do it. So I'll learn sometime, and it'll be in the C++ tutorials. So what we've done here is, again, we've pushed our add function onto the stack. And then we have to register it with Lua. And we do that by saying Lua underscore set global. 
set global L and we'll set it we'll just call it add well we have to call it add because we've already written that in the Lua program and remember in the function tutorial or if you remember in the functions tutorial when I said that the only way to uh, give Lua values in variables is by passing them as function parameters that's not really true you can use set global and think of this as giving the entire Lua program a parameter so this is just adding a new global variable to Lua and you see we haven't defined an index it just takes negative one on the stack and makes that the uh, it makes that the global variable so the C function is at negative one on the stack so that will be uh, set to add in our Lua program so there's kind of an invisible line that says add equals whatever the code is for adding the C function. So now we have to get our X value and we know how to do this and we're getting our X value because we want the return value that add gives to prove that this works. So we just use Lua get global where is it? Here it is. Get global L and X and then we'll just output it. Lua to number. And L negative one. So now the program's complete, so we can run it, and we get nine, which is two plus seven. So just to recap, what we've done is we've created a C function called add and made it take the Lua state. And then we defined it down here and we got the two arguments that were, oops, we got the two arguments that were passed in when the function was called from Lua. And we got them from the stack because that's how Lua communicates the function arguments with C. And then we uh, pushed the return value, which is the n1 and n2 variables added together. We pushed that onto the stack because that's how C communicates return values with Lua. And then we just use the C way of returning things, the return command. We just return the number of results, and that is convention and may be required. I'm not sure. Then to get Lu to make Lua know that the add function exists, we push it onto the stack with push C function. And then we set it to a global value and we name it add. Then we run our test.lua file. And since x is set to the return value of add, we get our x variable and then we just output it. So that's how you make Lua run a C function. And one more quick thing, I just learned this a few minutes ago. If you're using C++ with the Lua library, this does not work if you're using just C instead of having this x turn c and then uh, including these three files you can get rid of this and just include lua.hpp and if you don't know what a .hpp file is it's something that's usually used for libraries it's kind of the it's the header file and the cpp file pushed together into one file it just makes it easier so that you don't have to include uh, all the different files like we had to before I figured this out. So this is just a, a kind of shortening thing to anyone using C++, which is probably most people. But that's all for this tutorial. Uh, obviously I did manage to get another tutorial recorded before I left. So this is pre-recorded and I doubt I'll be able to get another tutorial out, but I might be able to. So. We'll see, so I'll see you either next week in the next tutorial or whenever I get back from vacation. So, see you then.